Second game of the season, and Lopetegui is under pressure to get a result with big games against Chelsea and Manchester City coming up. This one now is a tough, tough London derby against Crystal Palace. Joining me today, my old mate Dan, how you doing, mate? You all right? In person, live oh, and yes. in person. At the Roundhouse the round. in Dagenham. Yes. You know, thank you very much for hosting us today. But yeah, you good, mate? Yes, I'm good. Like I said, in my local, very handy for me. I know, it's great for um, you, isn't it? Beautiful. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a, what you said in that intro, Scott, I think raises a very interesting question. Is Lopetegui under pressure to get a result? Because it's a tough one, right? Like mm -hmm. you said, after this, we've got Man City. Yep. Probably going to lose. Yep. We've got Chelsea, which, which can go, go either way, as far yeah, as yeah. I'm concerned. So if you come out of that Chelsea game and we've not got any points it's tough but is he under pressure or does he is he in a grace period where we can go a few games and we can see okay you know as long as we can see we're going somewhere um i'll be honest mate i think he's under a little bit of pressure i really do because you look at palace palace lost at the weekend you know they've lost um uh elise has gone isn't he? is it elise elise uh, yeah he's gone Possible gay going out the door. I think yeah. Anderson could be potentially on his way to Fulham. He's already gone. He's gone to Fulham. So yeah. you're talking three of their main players out the door before they play us. Yeah. You know, and they're, they're, look, it's a pressure game for them as well because they need to pick up points as much as we do. Palace is normally a lucky hunting ground for us, but it's well, not been of late. It hasn't, yeah. You know, the performance on Saturday by us wasn't the greatest. Yeah, we had more possession of the ball, but... We had more what? XG. <laughs> What's the point of XG? What was it? Suchek had a 93, 0.93% XG and missed it. So yeah. XG means absolutely crap. It's a modern day thing that means nothing. So forget about that shit. <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> you know, um, it's, you know it, this is the thing now. It's, you've got, yes, he has got a grace period, right? Where he's got to embed this new philosophy and a new style. Like he's come out and admitted there's a lot of work still to do. And there is a lot of work still to do. To, dr to drum this Moyes ball out of the side is going to take time. Unfortunately, we're in the Premier League. There ain't no time. Right? Mm. And because we lost Saturday, the pressure's now on. And he's got to get some sort of result because after this is City, OK, we've got Bournemouth in the cup, which you could sit there and say could be a good way to get your first win. But then Bournemouth are going to be up for that game. So, look, there's no easy games in the Premier League. London derby, tough, tough fixture. I just think he's under, he is under pressure. Yeah, well, yeah, do you know what? It's, it's a tough one. Like you said, he's been heavily backed. Mm. I think there was already fans critical after just the one game. And I think there is always going to be a vocal minority mm. of fans that are really just, you know, you have to win everything. Yeah. But, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you would like to think that, we could have a bit of patience. But I think yeah, yeah, yeah. we talk yeah. about, we're going to talk about the starting 11. I think what fans are going, going to want to see and what gets you patience is if we see that you're learning mm -hmm. and you're trying, and even if we don't get the result, okay. Where is if he was to just play the same lineup he played against Villa and we lost, yeah. I think that would invite a bit of pressure on him. Yeah, so yeah, I think yeah. it's, it's the context of, if we were to lose the context of how we lost and, and the team we play, that's huge. Yeah, of course. And that, and this is the thing as well, you know, and you've got a... If Palace do lose Gahey before the game, I think you've got to look at us going into that as favourites. Yeah, yeah. You know, to lose two key players from their great run they had towards the end of last season, I think, well, you know, what they pick up a good section of points in about 17 games or 17 points in their last whatever games, you know, they, they had that very, very good run. And I think Palace expected to hit the ground running this season. Yeah. And, you know, with the result, they didn't really do that. So I just look at this now, as I said, losing one of their main state, one of their best players in attack, losing potentially their best defender and obviously losing an, uh, another one to Fulham. You know, you've got to be looking there right for the pickings. But like you, you you've got to see a progression now. You know, like I said, we we done it in a video just a little while ago where Nicky turned around and said that he gave the old guard a chance. And then he also laid down and said, I ain't scared about taking the captain off. I ain't scared about taking the best player off. So he's put yourself out there. Yeah. But like you said, you've got to see this progression now. We learn from Saturday. We can't start certain people going into this game. We've got to look at 
possibly bringing Wan Bissaka in at white back. And I'm a big fan of Souffal, but Wan Bissaka gives us a bit more defensive solidity. Yeah, you, know, you look at how many chances came down his side. He gave is, up against Villa. Yeah, between him and Mavropanos, it, it, it wasn't ideal. And so bringing in again, we'll talk about the lineup, but bringing in that defensive shortness mm. on the right hand side, you know, he's going up against Eze, who, who will be there. Who yeah, yeah. Is, you know, at the, at this moment, is going to be their best player. Yeah, yeah these yeah. other players yeah. leaving, so he's going to be a massive threat. So Eze versus Sufa, I'm not confident on mm. Eze versus. Wan Bissaka, you feel a lot more. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Better. You know, ex Palace player as well, Wan Bissaka. So yeah. you know, he'll he'll be. I think he'll be respectful to the Palace faithful. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah. The game, but but he'll be up for it. He'll be up for it. He likes going there. He gives good performances at mm-hmm. Selhurst Park. So yeah, that's a must, and I think that is going to be the key. Is like what I liked about Lopetegui from that Villa game. He's not afraid to make changes, no. and yeah, he yeah. made like a tri- triple substitution. Yeah, like, yeah. boom. Bring players off, bring players on. We made five subs ultimately in the end of the game. <laughs> Something we haven't seen yeah, for a long it time. Was like mad. <laughs> um, you know, so I remember we had uh, uh, Jamie sits next to us. He was like, he ain't even got anyone warming up, warming up. And I'm like, yeah, look, he's got three, three of them three coming on. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that's, and, and that's the thing, you know, when when you look at it, and this again is where our, our it's mad that players and managers spit opinion, you know. You, you look at what you know, Jamie who sits near us. He was saying, you know, he's got no confidence in the manager whatsoever. Yeah. You know, so it just it just goes to show how football is as a whole. And um, you know, like you said, you see you see the substitutions. In hindsight, was three subs probably too many at that stage of the game? Looking back, maybe. It, don't get me wrong. I think at the time they were the right decisions because Bowen and Pakistan are not playing a lot of game, like not having a lot of training after coming back after the international break. Pakatar also being on the booking as well. Yeah. With 20 minutes to go, bringing on fresh legs. But when realistic, you look at it, okay, you had the Suchek chance that he missed, but the other best chance we had in that second half fell to Danny Ings, a player that with both of them players that we try to push out the door. Yeah. You know, and both of the old guard, which just goes to show that you've got to give the new players time to bed in. Yeah. But I think I think at the moment we're probably looking at Alvarez. There's rumours he's fit. There's rumours he's not fit. Well, this is the this is the thing. Apparently, his agents are pushing that he's fit mm-hmm. because they want they don't want to ward off any potential interest from big clubs. And then the club are trying to put out that he's not fit to yep. ward off that interest. So yeah, yeah, we yeah. don't know what to believe. I'd be very surprised if he was starting on Saturday. I, I'm I'm with you, mate. I don't. I don't see coming back from that type of injury. We've seen it before. I think what was it? Hamstring injury, Ed. Yeah. Or yeah. Groin injury, something like, like that. We, we've seen, we've rushed players back from them type of injuries before, yeah. and fallen a cropper. And I think Alvarez is a key component into how we are going to play. And I don't think, as much as I think, you know, Rodriguez done a riot, but still needs to adapt to to the Premier League. I don't think rushing Alvarez back would be a good point. I think, you know, to let him take time to bring him back in, let's be honest, we're going to need him for Manchester City because that is going to be a backs against the wall type yeah. job. You know, and if you're going to bring him back, maybe look at Bournemouth, but two games in a short period of time might not be good for him, but look at Man City overall. Yeah, this is where we'll see Lopetegui's tactical ability to be mm. able to learn, look at an opposition, adapt, yep. tweak, change things. Um, and it is important, like I said, we, we, we want to at least come away with a point. If we come away with a point, you feel like, okay. I'll, I'll be honest, when I say get a result, that's what I mean. At least a at draw. Least a draw. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying we're going to go there and steamroll them because we're not Palace or a good outfit, even with the players that they're losing. You know, But I just think you've got to take advantage of the fact that they're losing such key components into their side. Yeah. You know, so... But a, a draw won't be... You know, a draw to Palace away isn't no. a bad result. Yeah, like, and... and yeah, you look at our team. I look at our squad. It's better than Palace's squad on paper. Like, yeah, on paper, yeah. it's yep. better than Palace's squad. But at the same time, we're early into a new project where we're playing a new style of football. We've got a load of new players in. Yes, they've lost players, but the players that they have got are settled mm. and are used to playing the way Glasner wants them to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they started a bit slow. When Glasner came in, they were losing their first few games. Then got up to speed and it clicked, mm-hmm. and they were getting win well, after win. Yeah, after I win. think as well when when you look at that, when you look at the manager coming in halfway through the season, you see it at Villa with Emery. You know, he they he come into a Villa side that were awful under Gerard, and yeah. but because they had that 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 half a season 
fitness levels in them and he got he just literally changed the way that they were going to play. I think with with Lokotegi, especially because this has been a year of so many international competitions, he hasn't had that full pre-season with all the players. You know, as we said, Bowen Pakatar come back two weeks before the start of the season. That's nothing to try and embed. So I think he's got a more difficult job than the Palace manager did going into Palace and Emre did going into Villa because they had that after the season playing together, even though they weren't playing well, and he's just come in and said, right, we're going to change. Boom, boom, boom. Nobody's got to get, you've got to get up to speed the way I want to play. Yeah. But fitness levels, sharpness and all that, you're already there. Yeah. And that's what the biggest problem I think with Lockup particularly has got with us at the moment. Yeah, so that's it. So we've got to be prepared that it may take a bit of time, hmm. but it shouldn't take a full season. Like there has to be a point where we see it click into place. Yeah. And as the yeah, and, yeah. and what he has to do is like you said, and we'll talk about the lineup in a minute, is get the new sign ins game time. That's it. That's and get it. them in. Because that is the positive for me with the Villa game. That team that lost to Villa. Nowhere near our best team. Nope. Like, no, no, no. Most Definitely of not. those players will not be anywhere near the starting eleven in a few weeks' time. Mm-hmm. So, so say, talking about starting eleven, what changes would you make? What would you go for? Yeah. So obviously, Ariola stays in goal. He could have done better for that mm. shot, but uh, the the corner. But ultimately, he is our best keeper, and yep. he is quality. Um, yeah, Emerson, Max Kilman stay. The changes at the back, Tadebo mm-hmm. and Mavrapa- Mavrapanos. I think I think he's good, but the problem is in him. Like you watch one game, one minute you're like, oh that's brilliant, Mavrapanos, and then you're like, what the hell is Mavrapanos exactly. yeah, doing yeah, yeah, in the yeah, same yeah, game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's big mad. frustration. Yeah, big, big frustration. So Tadebo came off the pitch. He didn't get enough time to really mm-hmm. shine, but he's got minutes in the Premier League. I would lean towards going with Tadebo. He is obviously being brought in to be our first choice, mm-hmm. right side of centre back. So I go to Debo Wambasaka without a doubt. He's had a preseason with Man United. Mm-hmm. He's now yeah. had training with us. Yep. Has to start. And then the midfield is an interesting one. Suchek, he shouldn't be anywhere near that starting 11. If we're going to play the two in midfield, I'd play Ward Prowse and Rodriguez. Mm-hmm. You have Ward, Rodriguez holding Ward Prowse to push forward, create press. Um, and then you're going to have, yeah, Paqueta maybe just in front. Yep. Kudus, as much as he's not ideal on the left, free roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. in fact, actually, Paqueta. Paqueta on the left. Because yeah. he, he's more, I think he's more experienced there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Kudus in the middle. But again, they drift. And Bowen as well. Bowen in, on the right. Interchanging. Yeah, they interchange. Because Bowen, when we talk about the wingers, like Paqueta, and it is to our detriment sometimes in, in, our, in our width, not mm-hmm. having the width. But Bowen cuts inside. Paqueta cuts inside. Kudus can drift outside. So you have that. And then I would just go with full crew got top. Because as much as, obviously, Antonio has these these attributes that he has, if we're going to be looking to play a different way, the players have to build an understanding with full crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they yeah. are going to feed him and link up and play off him, then he has to play. So you're sort of, you're sort of saying start him for the first hour. Yeah, and then probably look to bring on an Antonio. I would, yeah, I, I'm much more comfortable with Antonio coming off the bench. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not saying he should play, but Antonio off the bench. Defenders are tired. Oh shit, we got a mark. Yeah, yeah, now. yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Impact stuff. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. he'd be. I think he'd be brilliant at that. That's the team I go for. No, uh, mate. I, I'll be honest with what you've said. There is pretty much nailed on to roughly what I would say. I would the changes you've made at the back. Tadebo is a little bit of a worry because again not up to speed and you know Palace going forward they are exciting you know they've got mm. some good players so maybe him not up to speed but then you've got to thrust him in at some point and you? Yeah. you either put him in now or you put him in against Bournemouth and then you've got to look right well was he any good against Bournemouth put him in City so yeah. again tough choices but I, I think I'm with you same back four same goalkeeper I, I look personally Probably a Rodriguez and Pakatar midfield two. Yeah. Kudus in the 10, Bowen on the right, Somerville on the left and full Krug up top. I like that as well. I think I think as much as I sit there and say, you know, when I pick the first team, I think you don't want to put too many players in. Yeah. I think the performances of the likes of Suchek, Antonio, you know, Antonio, again, we see the best of Antonio and the worst of Antonio yeah. in split seconds of each other. And it's the, you know, he's, as I said, he's still got a role to play, but Somerville's got Premier League experience. 
Palace's back line is going to be under pressure with the changes that potentially could be there. Could be a good time to start a new striker in the Premier League, get him adapted to it. Could be a good time to Somerville to come in, you know, and like you said, you can still interchange. You know, you can still look to bring a Wall Prowse on and move Pakatar further forward and go for a Kudos and Bowen wide. But again, if you if you were looking to take uh, Fulkrug off at, uh, in the 60th, 70th minute, something like that, because you get in a minute, you can then put Bowen up top and again have that interchange, play with a false nine. Yeah. You know, which which I don't think, I can't see doing, but we see it last season and that was one of the better things from what we saw last season. Yeah, it worked. When you had the Pakatar, Kudos, Bowen, interchanging in positions not sitting there and in a way with what you're saying with Pakatar on the left I completely understand because the understanding he's got with Emerson yeah exactly Kudus didn't have that with Emerson no you know and you, you seem to see Pakatar and Emerson seem to enjoy playing with each other but yeah both Brazilian yeah like. you know but for, no I think we can do that Rodriguez Pakatar midfield too with Kudus in the team yeah yeah listen I like that personally mm. I think that's a good you know, some of them I think is quality. So yeah. I'd be happy with either either one of those. Mm. Like, I'm confident. So, but we yeah. definitely both, neither of us want to see the same start eleven. No, and <laughs> that is where he. If we see Suchek in the midfield, if we see Antonio up top and all that, then it's going to raise questions because yeah. Suchek, yes, people look at on paper like he's at the XG, oh, mm. most chances and that, but uh, he just doesn't do enough. Our midfield, it, they'll cut through it like a knife through, like yeah, knife yeah. through butter. Exactly. Exactly, and, and that's, that's but that is also the way with Rodriguez Pacatar said in midfield. You know, it is. You, I, I'm looking at it more that they need to be more worried. We need to make them worry about us than us worry yeah. about them. Rodriguez, he can put a tackle in. Hmm. Um, it, it, I, I guess it's just clearly defined roles. And Paqueta as well has defensive capabilities. Yeah, he gets so very underrated for yeah. what he can do defensively. Exactly, and this is the thing. I know I, I want to see Paqueta as a 10. I think he is our main man. But I think until Alvarez is yeah. back, I think that if you're not going to pick Wall Prowse, you can sacrifice that little bit. Because, yeah. like you said, for Leon, he used to do it. He used to play in the eight for Leon. He plays in the eight for Brazil as well. Yeah. You know, that's how you got to look at it. So The one thing I like about him in the 10 for us when Full Krug is playing is them through balls and balls yeah. over the, the top. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Full Krug will, will just feast off of those balls. Mm. You can see it, you know, them little through balls, yeah. that dinks over the so like he will love that. Yeah, but it's and also he's good at playing off the shoulder. It's also when you when Pakatar's in the eight, he picks up the ball a bit deeper, and then you've got the runs, the runs that Somerville's going to make, the Bowens are going to yeah. make, the, the Kudas is going to make. So it gives him the opportunity. That's to what off. Suchek can't do. He can't pick and up the ball deep and then you know pass it and or carry it. The unfortunate thing with Suchek, mate, is if that he's not scoring mm. and he ain't defending. Mm. It's the other part of his yeah. game, which is a key part of being a midfielder. Yeah, he's a midfielder, yeah. but he's in no man's yeah. land. And, that, and that's the problem. So um, it's the evolution. Yeah, he's given him a chance. He's, he's, he's looked at all the players from last mm-hmm. season and said, right, fight for your place. Yeah, now yeah. he has the opportunity to go, right, OK, well, I'm going to give him a chance. I'm going to give yep. him a chance. These are the signings. And we could have Sola coming in. Yeah, possibly Sola. another signing. So um, another centre midfielder, which is going to be... Huge. Be very interesting to see what yeah. we're going to do. So before we go, mate, what are you looking for scoreline on Saturday? <sighs> I'm going to say, I'm going to stick with a 2-1. I'm still not confident we're, we're ready to keep a clean sheet despite the changes to the back line. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I'm, I think we'll concede, but I think we've got enough firepower in there. Even though we didn't score from open play against Villa, I think that line, I think we'll score too. I'm going to sit on a fence and say it's going to be a one-all draw. Because oh. like you, I don't think we'll get a clean sheet. And it does worry me a little bit, the fact that we haven't, you know, the, the goal came from a dubious penalty. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I'm going one-all. So, yeah. well, let's hope I'm right. And That's it. Well, let us know, you know, there weren't much difference between mine and Dan's starting 11. But in the comments below, let us know what uh, starting 11 you prefer and your score predictions. And obviously we will be back for doing another preview I will definitely be back I'm not sure who I'm going to have as my guest but probably you or I mate because mm. Nicky's working nights and it seems the only time I can film at the minute um, yeah. but yeah so I said check out all our videos we have got season predictions we know it's after the start of the season but we've got a season prediction video so check that one out as well we will be back for post-match is there a post-match pint? yeah we might do a post-match, post-match pint, pint online for the Paris yeah so there'll, there'll be stuff and there'll be a watch along as well so yes. um, make sure you check out all them out one thing left to say, come on, come on, on you iron.